When I started on Open Office uh, a year and a half ago, it was actually by pure accident, which I think at least Rob knows. Um, I went in, I wanted to download the Danish version because I'm Dane. There was no Danish version. And the guys, when I asked on, on the mailing list, sort of told me, nah, we don't have a Danish version. Why don't you go ahead and translate it yourself? So I went ahead, translated it myself. Not in the best Danish, but at least we got a release out of it. But I saw during that process that there was a world between the translators and the developers. And to me, that was sort of not fair. To me, a, a translator is just as much of value as a developer. So I started developing a new product, uh, which I'm going to talk a little bit about. But the more, more important than the product itself is actually the process change. And I have, by the way, because I also work for Infra, seen a lot of other projects within the Apache group struggle with the same kind of problems. So let's just, oh, I have to turn that on as well. We have already heard about the numbers, but I'm just going to add to it that when, when we say it has been downloaded, a lot of times, 45% approximately is in 30 non-US languages. So whoever tells me that translation is not a priority in Open Office is simply haven't read the numbers. We have 122 languages defined at the moment, or a lot of them only partly translated. The the good thing about OpenOffice is that we allow small dialects, small languages. For instance, in Spain, where I live, we have three different languages translated in OpenOffice. Something that some of the <coughs> commercial products would never do because there are no money in it. But we offer that possibility. As you'll see a little bit later, I have some ideas how we can use this information which we gather for Open Office to help other Apache projects. Because we have such a big translation, we have such big numbers, we can sort of give that translation to other projects that need it and thereby get one to one to be three. It's big. I was pretty amazed when, when I looked at it first time and said, can't be right. But actually, our user interface is about 90, 91,000 words. Of course, combined into, into strings and sentences. But 91,000 words to translate, it's not something you do in an evening. Our online help system has 440,000 words in it, huge. And sadly enough, not getting the attention it should have from translators. I haven't even counted the documentation. I have no idea how much that is, but that's also big. At the moment, we have 170 active translators. And here's a big change to normal Apache policy. We allow non-committers to translate as well. So we don't require a signed ICLA for, trans, uh, for translators to work. We have not broken the Apache rules. Uh, we have just found a way to live with the Apache rules, meaning that whenever a translation is finished, there will always be a committer that review it. So we could see this in terms of Apache terminology as patches going in. But 170 active translators, it's something I think we in, in Open Office should be proud of. It's actually it's more translators than its developers. Language handling today is totally manual. And if our release manager would sit here, 
he would jump up and say, yes, and I don't like it. Uh, it's very time consuming. We talk about days to generate a new language release. It requires also to do on one of our VMs, which is not nice. It involves converting three or four file formats before we are there. And due to, due to this, we can only make the languages available shortly before a release. It's not like we have for developers, we have a nightly build, and the day after they can see it on the platforms we support. Sadly enough, we have one to two weeks turnaround for testing. And we also have no formal testing of language versions. I saw with our last release a quite funny thing. We had, we had a problem with one of the languages. There was a mishap in the file conversion, which actually meant that the menus in that language was pretty strange. And because we had no formal testing, we didn't detect it before it actually went out. The current cycle now, the current process that we have now is, yeah, you can nearly see it's complex. We have the developers sitting. They use, of course, subversion, put things in subversion. If I just look at developers, they have it pretty easy. Subversion goes into the nightly build system. And the day after, our testers can work happily on whatever change there is. At the same time, when a developer changes a string, it goes manually into our Poodle. Poodle is our translate server. It needs to be manually transferred there. That involves two file conversions. Now, the translators work on Poodle do whatever they like to do in whatever language they like to do it. And at some point of time, we decide to take a snapshot of the Poodle database, put it back into SVN. Uh, that's another file conversion. And now comes the hard part. Now we have everything in SVN. We have the developer's content. We have the translator's content in SVN, all ready to go. But we don't have a build system that supports it. So we have to build all languages manually per language. That's, that's where the release manager gets pretty tired. And then we can finally release it for test. Typically, as, as I've seen, it might have been different early on. We have max two test cycles for languages. And with our release candidate we have just had out, we only had the fully translated languages out for test. Yeah? Yeah? Nope. Actually, not. We could. But you have to go in and modify the nightly build, because we don't build with any languages in our nightly build. It's, it's done on the build bots, but it's a special job. That's the weekly build. That's clear. Yeah. Add, adding a new language to any project is a manual process because it's not just the language. You have so much surrounding the language that needs to be changed. But let's see if we can do that a little better. This is the proposal we are working on right now. And it actually it works on one computer at the moment. Uh, translators work on Poodle. Poodle will automatically send all changes into subversion. Developers are already working in subversion, so they have no change. So seen from a developer, if you look at Remember the old picture? Developers, subversion, nightly build, and test. Everybody is happy. That's the same. New thing is, translators, I translate something to Danish. 
inputen. It automatically goes into subversion. It automatically get built with a nightly build, slightly different than today. And the day after, I have my test. Not depending on a release, I can do that every night I want to. That's a goodie for all the small languages while they translate that they can see the effect of their translation immediately. We have had so many new translators coming in asking this string, where does it appear? And they haven't had, don't have a chance today to see where does it appear. That will solve this. But there are a number of things that are still outstanding, and Andrew focused on one of them. We assume in this nightly build that we only have one exe, one exe that contains all languages to make it easier for everybody. We can see, to sum it up, all language handling is automatic. Release manager is not involved. We have tests available the day after. And to me, very important that this happens in parallel. We don't develop our product first and then translate it. We do things in parallel. Released languages are built every night. That means at the moment we have, if I remember right, 21, 22 languages that are fully translated, and are in our release. I don't know. It's a bit bigger for four. Yeah. So it's growing. Those that are on the release list will be built every night. Other ones will be built on demand. On demand meaning that with the process, if we have a translator that translates a single string making a change in, in subversion, then it will be automatically added to the build system for that night. It's a little trick I'm going to learn. I don't know, I actually can give you one thing. Do you, do you have uh, another level, not just the release language, but they used to have like an active language. Active language. And I've, done, I've taken that a step further and said the, out, uh, the active languages means if there's a change in subversion, that's added. So we don't need to, to think about what's active, what's not active. Released is a different thing because released needs to have a higher level of testing at least. And uh, as I said, I, I, instead of having a list of active languages, I prefer to say, if there is a translation, new translation in subversion, we build it. I, I, I think that's sort of true. It's, sort of, it, it's just two ways to get to the same goal. Important is, translators can have a new build the day after and test their stuff. Two days. Uh, if there is a change in, if a developer changes a source string, which is always an ENUS string, if he changes a source string, it will take two days for the translation to ripple through. Because the first night we will have the English US version there, and the next night all translators have a chance of translating and make that version.
that's a push. You get it. I, I come back to it and, and show. It will be clearly marked in the translation as uh, needs work. That's uh, the term we use in Poodle. So whenever an English text changes, all translations of that text will be marked need work. So, so they have at the moment to look into Poodle to see it. And act, actually, I, I managed it here with our new release to make all release languages go down to 5%, <laughs> just, just due to a slight mishap. <laughs> My idea uh, at the moment is actually to have a large list, remove those languages who are only 10% translated or something. Something like you say, take languages that are 70% or above. And whenever they have a change, we build them. I don't want to build all those languages every night because that's a heavy load on the build system. Pure, pure, pure technically what we'll be doing is in the build system, we will do an SVN require and set a variable, the variable of the active languages. So you have a little added step in the build pre, in the pre-process where you check, you ask subversion if there are changes in this tree. Okay. You, you, have a, you have a hook for it. But I'll come back a bit to that. Now, the actors we have that are in this, we have three people or three sets. We have the developers, we have the translators, we have the testers. Now shown with, with the process that they grow together and they work in parallel. How do they do it technically? Yeah, there are some changes to our build system, once again. The developer will always develop in ENUS, and that's, by the way, a separate discussion because my opinion is that developers are not necessarily the best ones to pick a, a good text. Uh, we have a number of developers who don't have ENUS as their natural language and some of the texts that come out might not be the correct ones. So another step in the future could be that we'll also translate ENUS. Yes? The developer needs to put it in ENUS because of all the translators. It's more, yeah. What, what we have to do is all make files needs to get a new file in or a new variable in called language file list. And that's very new because in our current system, Whenever we extract text from the system, the current extractor, TransEX, actually looks at all files and try to look in all files if there are text. That takes a hell of a lot of time. With this, the developer tells which files contains strings. Now, second thing is, 
the text will automatically always be extracted to Poodle. It's not a separate run. It's always in there. Whenever a developer commits, he has not only to commit his own changes, but there's a new module called Lang, and he has to commit the changes in there as well. By committing them, they're automatically sent to Poodle. Now, everybody is going to say, and I've heard it a lot of times, can't be done, cost too much. The old performance penalty when I made, when I wanted to make a Danish version was 23%. The new performance is 3%. So compared to making a ENUS version, I add 3% and get it all automated. And that's worth, that's worth it. If I only make a build of one, one file, the change is less than 1%, where it in the current system is 23%. So we make it automated. For that, for exactly. Exactly. The developer cycle, as, as you see it now, developers, they build, they have their system. They have their open office version. The build system takes, the P, uh, takes all the strings as so-called templates, put it into subversion. The committer then commits his source chains and the template chains, and that goes automatically to Poodle. A lot easier. International developers have to do a little one step more because they want to have their language into Poodle or into my executable. So what they have to do is to take the PO files and merge them into the source files. But it's not a special run. It's simply calling the make file with an option and then it does that. The performance penalty for international developers, meaning uh, language versions, was in old days n times 100% for every language. n is the number of languages. Because at the moment, we simply do a, a complete build for every language. A total rebuild with the new system is 17% more than an EU-US build. And again, build of one file is less than 1% because we only do the changes. The 17% is, by the way, not one language. That's 35 languages. That's the 4-1 the four level at the moment. As I said, the, you can see the developer cycle for international is slightly different because there we don't update the template. We use the translated files in our source. So we merge, we merge the Danish language, German language, whatever, into the source files and do the build. Again, we have an autosync from Poodle. So whenever something changes in Poodle, the translator decides, the translator being a committer, decides to commit it to Poodle. Let me see this. Now the translator has a different, a different view. First of all, he gets the templates. The templates are the original strings, the ENUS strings. They come automatically from subversion to Poodle. It's done by a cron job that runs automatically every day. On demand can be done by PMC members who have to do access to the translate server. That is, by the way, at the moment in discussion because the translate server is a common service for all projects and 
we have lately had two incidents where one project have ruined another project. So infra is not too happy, but that was my infra hat on. <laughs> Translating can be done online or offline as you please. Online directly on translate.apache.org or you can go into tra uh, the translate server Take the directory you're interested in. You don't need to take all. You take that directory, for instance, calc, download it to your computer, and do it offline with uh, programs like PO Edit or whatever. You upload it again, and the translate server will automatically detect what are changed, and the change will be marked in your name. That's an important thing we have now, that using Poodle, we can see who translated. And uh, we have a feature in Poodle that it seems nobody cares about, but I think it's a very nice feature that we can also see historical changes. We don't only see the last one, but we can see this string has been translated five or six times to the same language. So maybe the string has a problem. As I said earlier, support for non-committers. And it's a standard Apache uh, platform. It's supported by Infra. Actually, at the moment, I'm the one who is doing that job. PO files update to, uh, to subversion requires committers because committing to subversion, that's committers. We translate has a button. So whenever a committer goes in into translate and says, I want to update the German language, he simply for the German language clicks commit. It comes and asks him for his password, and it's in, in subversion. Pretty easy. If he doesn't commit, it stays locally in the Poodle Translate server, which has its own database, so it's not lost. But it actually, think of it if you're a developer, you have the code on your own directory on your PC, and you decide when you want to give, share it with others, commit it. So exactly the same process. And again, uh, PMC members with uh, sudo access can force an update, which will be typically done a little before a release. Here's the translator cycle. Subversion automatically to Poodle. And the translator interact with our, our Poodle system. Some point it goes back into nightly build and we have an open office version. Again, it's an open, it's one exe that contains all languages. And I know there are some discussions how, how can we limit the size of the download package. The main problem is not the executable because the executable actually doesn't vary a lot. The main problem is the dictionaries. Now, back to your question, Andrew. Uh, whenever an EU message is new, that is, the developer have added something, it shows up as untranslated in Poodle. Whenever an ENUS message is changed, it shows up at, as need work. So it's very, it's very easy for translators to see what happened. And we can, of course, it would be pretty easy to make a script that sent a mail to the L10N list and say, hey guys, this was 100%, now it is 90% or whatever. I'm not sure to. We, Yeah. 
Yeah, but the problem is the other way around. You have a developer who changed the text. So your, your commit message will say that this source file was changed. It won't necessarily say that we had a changed text. It, it is a thing we can set up in Poodle at the moment. It's not set up. Actually, uh, it would go boil down to the source because the developer in the source would have to specify the length. It's possible, but it, it, it requires a change in our compiler structure. Actually, in VCL to be very precise. I don't think it's a problem if, if, if the tester, the translator, can see it the day after. It's, it's more getting rapid cycles that's the real problem, <laughs> I think. Non-users, guests that come into the system, can add suggestions. And we get uh, 10, 15 suggestions a week um, from users we don't know who are. Simply come in and suggest that we make a change. That requires a committer to actually add it to the code base or to the text base. Non-committers can accept, add, add and accept translation, but only committers can update to subversion. Very short about this. Uh, the four project was actually a miss. It's actually eight projects. Um, we are adding a term terminology PO file. It's also a feature that is not very used at the moment. But I looked at the word cancel. The word cancel should more or less be translated with the same name for one language. Um, in my own language, it was translated with five different names. In German, we had six. <laughs> and that's no good. The terminology file, we would add things like cancel, open, close, all, all the standard text in there. And translate server will automatically give you a warning if you translate using another name. It won't deny you translating it, but you get a warning and saying, this is not what we normally use, which is also a very good. We also have translation suggestions. The translate server automatically look if, if it has a, a string that looks like this string and gives you a suggestion based on that to help you. And of course, subversion support. It's something that Poodle has because we made it. <laughs> uh, they had something, and somebody from Infra. Uh, made it a little better. Okay. I'm not naming anybody here. <laughs> when you get into Translate AO, you get a very quick, quick overview of the status of your translation and who translated the last. As an administrator, I use that to see is there anything happening. But as a, as a translator, it's nice to go in and see, oh, who, who worked here? Why has it changed? If we drill down, we can see now I was at, at the language level. That's not project level. Within the language, I can see what's the status of all the projects we have. Because again, we are patchy wide. Uh, this one is special. That's uh, my own. But otherwise, you see 
This one misses nothing. They have quite a lot of uh, work to do. This is words, number of words not translated. And when it says nobody out here, that's a user that hasn't logged in, meaning a guest. The help system, just to drill one step further down, now I'm in a directory. And it simply tells me I have 1,010 words left. I can click on that, and then I come into the actual translation. The actual translation is, again, quite easy. It will always present you with the English text. You put it in here. Now comes one very important thing. If, if I'm not uh, logged in, it will only say suggestion here. And if I'm not sure about the translation, I can always check my needs work. And that, what, that is what happens if the English text has changed then that check mark will be set. We have built a framework around that now. It's a framework that is easily ex extendable for conversions. It has a C++ class for every type of conversion. So if we have another Apache project that comes in and says, oh, we, we do it in this way, they simply write a C++ class that extracts and merges data to and from their source files. It has a uh, little feature that we can convert existing PO files. It's so that we don't do a big bang. It can generate something which we know of is called key ID, which is a very nice feature. It's actually a language in its own, where you can call it up on the UI, say you use a key ID, and then you'll get a number telling you this, this string here is actually this PO string you had to translate. And yeah, it can do the other things as it should do. The status at the moment is that we have a problem with the merging .sse files because those files are pretty old and has been changed. Uh, as time goes on, there are a lot of, um, how do I put this politely? There are a lot of strange uses of our, our strings in there. And uh, for at least 100 files, I have to go in and manually update the files before we can extract them. I can give you one example is, uh, I have one place where I have a list box, and the list box contains about 16 strings. But the name of the list box is about 100 lines before. And it's simply not, not possible to really put that or extract it automatically. And by the way, the current system doesn't extract it correctly either. That's what I call rework the SVL module. Then. When we are starting to go back to trunk, the process has started. We don't do a big bang. I've promised uh, my PMC colleagues not to do that. First step will now, from now on, will be to merge the make files. As soon as our next release is out, I will start make, uh, merging make files. Then we'll merge the source file changes and, at the very last, activate gain lang and get rid of, of the old translation process. As you might hear, there's a presentation this afternoon about changing the build system, and that will tell a little bit more about how this is going to happen. And then allow the commit directly from Poodle. The allow the commit directly from Poodle is at the moment not decided by the PMC group. It's a suggestion from me. In the future, which is soon, we will offer gain language together with Translate Apache Org to ASF project. In, in fact, gain language might go uh, away from the source base of OpenOffice into its own source base. We will use or offer uh, OpenOffice translations as starts to other projects. Uh, we have a project called Subversion, for instance. They came in half a year ago. 
and I made a, made a deal with them and said, okay, I extract manually. Yeah, they had about 15, 20 words, standard words, open, close, print, cancel. And I found them for all our languages and gave it to them sort of as, as a startup present. Why should a translators translate the same work for multiple projects? It's, it's not the Apache way. So we, my idea is to make an ASF directory where we have these standard texts in. And simply say to projects, if you start using the Poodle server, you will get 35 languages as a startup. And I said, move game language to a separate project. So that's about it. Thanks. Oh, <laughs> yeah, questions is also OK, Rob. <laughs> I hoped I wouldn't get that question. Uh, yes, I'm thinking about it with two hats on. First, uh, I'm thinking about it in, in my work for Infra, where we have a little software called CMS. And uh, we have some ideas of how to integrate that into CMS, but it's, it's more a little bit long term. And then I've looked at it from an open, open office standpoint. And we could actually do it pretty easy. Use the same procedure for our, uh, for our web pages. Yes, so, it, so it's, it's, it's more a question of writing a handful of scripts that does it. There is one little but, uh, but that but might be a bit big. We need to say that language versions of our uh, web page is identical. Otherwise, we can't control it. We also need to have a way of naming the language versions, which I haven't found it yet. I haven't found the. Yeah, we, we, we should do it now. We should actually have our main path. And then my idea is that we would have slash Dane, slash DK, slash D, slash whatever, and then have the full set below it. And then tell everybody, don't use CMS to change your language version. Use CMS only on the ENUS version. And we can actually block that. That's where the script comes in, because we would, of course, have to, all, all pointers would have to be modified when we translate it. Yes, correctly. And I've looked at, we can simply add a tag to the page. And we look, we look after that tag in the page. Yeah, but that's a CMS problem at the moment. I can only in CMS block a directory. I can't block a file. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> he, he has already told me how to do it, but there's a difference between being told how to do it and actually do it. <laughs>
yes, yes and no. <laughs> uh, if, the, if you upload it and the English text have changed, it will be rejected. And you will get a warning saying, I cannot upload this. New text, no. For new, if, if you have new text coming in, you'd have to download it again. But you'd see it, once you have uploaded, you'd see I still have that many words untranslated. That's actually a feature that has been working for a good year now. I personally translate using offline. I, I don't like sitting online. Pardon? Most of, it has changed quite a lot since, since we got, uh, since we allowed non-committers. We have in, uh, in, daily, in daily uses up to our releases, for example, at the moment, I see 10, 15 users a day on, on the translate server. We actually had to opt the memory for it. But I like, it's a good sign that we have to opt the memory because it means somebody is using it. And just when we talk about web pages, we don't talk about form and we don't talk about wiki because that can't be online translated. <laughs> Core static so web pages. Yeah, but then it's not, it's separate, yeah. Okay, more questions? Thank you.